What game went from an arcade classic to a point and click adventure? What strategy series released a shooter that tanked the franchise for more than a decade? Here are 15 video game sequels that look nothing like the original. I'm Danger Dolan, and today I will be your narrator. Number 15. Super Mario Brothers. People often talk about the differences between SMB and SMB2, even though they started out as completely different games. They were at least both platformers. The original Mario Brothers, before it became Super, was just a single screen arcade game in which Mario and Luigi just knock out a bunch of enemies by hitting them from below. Most people now know this original Mario Brothers as the versus minigame in Super Mario Brothers 3. But only if they're a bloody millennial, right? Number 14. Toe Jam and Earl in Panic on Funkotron. It's strange to think of it this way because of its 90s hip hop style, but Toe Jam and Earl is a top down roguelike where you search for treasure. By contrast, Toe Jam and Earl in Panic on Funkotron was a side scrolling platformer with a weird rhythm minigame baked into it. Still two players though, which is impressive. Not a lot of platformers in the mid 90s had simultaneous co op. Number 13. Wolfenstein 3D. Most people think of Wolfenstein as the grandfather of first person shooters, but that's because they're thinking about the 3D one. The original Castle Wolfenstein was released in 1981, and it's still about sneaking around a Nazi hideout, but while 3D rewards you for basically killing every Nazi you see, Castle Wolfenstein focuses more on stealth and escaping, as firing your gun or using grenades can sound an alarm and get you captured. Number 12. Saints Row 4. When the Saints Row series began, it was just a simple Grand Theft Auto clone in a sea of games looking to capitalize on the sudden mainstream popularity of Thug Life. Granted, Saints Row was one of the better do criminal shit in an open world games, but it was about gang warfare, nothing more. Saints Row 4 went fully over the top and decided to have you play as the President of the United States fighting aliens with superpowers and also doing criminal shit in an open world. For America. Number 11. Spec Ops The Line The Spec Ops series managed to crap out 8 mediocre games between 1998 and 2002, none of which are worth noting for any reason. Then the series went dormant for 10 years. Then out of nowhere, Spec Ops The Line appeared. And this is a military shooter, sure, but more to the point, it's a critique of modern military shooters and the people who play them. It repeatedly calls the player out for glorifying war, being desensitized to violence without thinking about the consequences. Basically, Spec Ops The Line's story trashes the entire Spec Ops series up to that point, and every game like it. Number 10. Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior There's a reason nobody talks about Street Fighter 1. In the original Street Fighter, the multiplayer is basically an afterthought. You play as Ryu, who fights through an assortment of AI-controlled bad guys. That's basically Street Fighter's arcade mode and most of the appeal of the game. If you want to play multiplayer, a second player can tag in as Ken, which is just a palette swap Ryu, and use the exact same moveset in a mirror match. Number 9. XCOM Enforcer XCOM is a strategy game franchise about trying to fight back an alien invasion with military squad tactics. XCOM Enforcer, the fifth game in the XCOM series, is a third person shooter starring a combat robot, with no strategy elements whatsoever. As you might imagine, nobody liked that. That's why, after Enforcer, 11 years passed before we got another XCOM game. Number 8. Pac-Man 2 The New Adventures There are a lot of versions of Pac-Man, most of which pretty much look exactly like Pac-Man. But the game actually called Pac-Man 2 is an unintuitive point-and-click adventure in which your only actual control mechanism is just telling Pac-Man to look at things. Sure, that's the true successor to the Pac-Man franchise, woo. Number 7. Team Fortress 2. The original Team Fortress wasn't even really a game, officially speaking. It was a Quake mod that came out in 1996. Valve ported the mod to its own engine and released it as an official game in 1999. But it wasn't until Team Fortress 2 that the game really came into its own with a full set of class-based moves, unique art style, and a cast of characters that didn't at all look like slightly differing military dudes. Now, Team Fortress 2 is basically about hats and source filmmaker projects. And everyone just plays Overwatch. Number 6. Resident Evil 4. This didn't just change Resident Evil games, it revolutionized the third person shooter with its over the shoulder perspective. But it's also responsible for taking Resident Evil into the realm of action horror instead of survival horror, a route it continued until arguably Resident Evil 7, which is a great game and I'm really glad that they unfucked it. Number 5. Grand Theft Auto 3. For anyone who spent a lot of time with Grand Theft Auto games in the last decade, the origin of the series likely looks completely alien. The original Grand Theft Auto is a top-down game that focuses primarily on driving and causing destruction for points. 
first game to actually employ the third person open world Grand Theft Auto formula was what we know today as GTA 3. Number 4. Star Fox Adventures. This might not really count in the truest sense. Star Fox Adventures is more of a spin-off project rather than a true sequel. Rare was making an unrelated game called Dinosaur Planet, and Nintendo, and especially Miyamoto, walked in and said, Our new series won't sell well. Hey, the character kind of looks like a fox, let's make it Star Fox. So they shoehorned the franchise into it. That's why this scrolling space shooter franchise suddenly got a buggy, kind of rushed Ocarina of Time style adventure with a ton of half-baked concepts, although I still like the game, but it's more of a guilty pleasure, not an objectively good game. Number 3. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Things really didn't go very well for Rare after they left Nintendo for Microsoft. Banjo-Kazooie fans finally got a sequel to their beloved platforming franchise. And it was a game about building cars with spare parts. Not only did Nuts and Bolts depart from the original series gameplay, they actively criticized Rare Games of all with relentless fourth wall breaking humor. R.I.P. Banjo Kazooie. Number 2 Chrono Cross. The sad thing is, Chrono Cross is actually kind of a good game. Unless you're playing it expecting a sequel to Chrono Trigger, then you're gonna be kind of disappointed. The SNES classic RPG Chrono Trigger left a number of major plot points unanswered, and Chrono Cross does like nothing to wrap them up, as it occupies a completely different location with almost completely different characters. The game also plays very differently with turn-based battles and variable skills on 45 characters, rather than real-time battles and set skills on 7 characters. In the vein of Star Fox Adventures, more of like a kind of spin-off. Number 1 Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link the differences between the original Legend of Zelda and Adventure of Link are infamous at this point. This is the absolute standard we're talking about sequels that broke away from their series standards. What really stands out about Zelda 2 is not just that it's different, it's that the Zelda series has grown to be one of the most influential in gaming history, and they have never attempted anything even similar to Zelda 2 in over 30 years since its release. So guys, what's your favorite game sequel that does something completely different with the series? Let us know in the comment section down below, pin over to the top. This video was made possible by our fans over on Patreon. Thanks for your support, guys. That is it for this countdown. Have a good one!